Hey, what's up guys? It's Gary from the Old Barn Homestead channel. Uh, hey, spent the last two days going up to Jackson, Tennessee to get the new plasma table and uh, just remove the plastic. They use this uh, stuff for boats uh, that shrink wraps onto it and uh, does a really nice job of keeping it covered and protected and all. So, and uh, they ship it without the covers on it and they, uh, maybe some sun glare here but one of these they drill and tap the gantry into the frame now is how they do it and so the frame or the gantry is bolted to the frame so I uh, thought that's a pretty cool idea you see the new clear path servo there um, anyway so they uh, they also switched over their standard powder coating to black and you couldn't really see it in their in their shop it's kind of a you know a little bit of a satin color but out here in the sun you can see that it's a uh, it's actually metallic <clears throat> and uh pretty cool looking so anyway uh you guys saw all the other videos we've got the electrical everything prepared and uh, getting ready to get it unloaded here get it pushed over into its spot back over there so we'll come back and once i get it unloaded i'm not going to show you all the loading you saw us loading it on jonathan's taylor uh, trailer and I'm going to unload this one in a very similar fashion. So um, I will come back and show you when we get it unloaded. And I got a lot of video on from True Cut at, uh, at their shop yesterday. And uh, some, you know, just, I mean, when you go see their shop and see all the things that they're making for customers, it makes my little table look like a little dinky one, you know, because it's the smallest one they really basically that they produce now i mean they do have a four by four but basically a four by eight's the smallest one and pretty much all the rest of the tape tables in there are five by ten or or six by tw twelve they had several six by twelves in there and it was just a deal where you know i mean i could have got the five by ten but it's not really you know if you're looking to buy one it's not that much more to get a five by ten and it does give you some flexibility but it's just for me it's just a I've had the four by eight for a year and I've never once had a reason to need a five by 10 to cut anything bigger than, <clears throat> than four by eight. <clears throat> and just the material handling, when you go to a five by 10, if you're gonna get five by 10 sheets, you know, especially sheet metal, it becomes really unwieldy to try to handle by hand. And um, so I just, I just stuck with the four by eight and, you know, save on space and, and um, it's, it's worked well for me. But if you have plenty of space and you have a forklift and you're thinking about getting a CNC plasma table, they're not much more to, I think it's just a few hundred bucks more to go from a four by eight to five by 10, maybe like 500. Don't quote me on that. You can check their website for it. But um, anyway, I'll come back and show you when I, once I get it unloaded and start to get some of the setup done on it. It's gonna take me a little while to get, you know, get it all set up and dialed in. And I wanna do the plumbing like we talked about with the drain and all that. So I'm gonna work on that today. And maybe possibly by the very end of the today or tonight, uh, have it fired up <clears throat> and cutting some stuff. We'll see. Okay, got it jacked up, got the casters on it, and uh, I got just this winch hooked up to it. And I really like this. I mean, it's just a Harbor Freight or whatever, but it's got a, lot, a nice actuation positive locking on the downward so you can easily let some out. And uh, so. Anyway, just gonna roll this off the edge, use the plasma cutter to kind of set it off of there. I've got some long ramps, but they're super heavy. They're long and flat. And getting those casters to make it up onto the ramp could be an issue. So this will be an easy, easy way to do it here. Just lift it with the gantry crane, set this end off, roll it on out, let the chain out. So we'll come back when we get it in position. Hey, I wanted to check in and see if this was safe. I mean, is this like, can you tell me, is this insurable? Is this OSHA approved? Let me get out here where you can see this better. Am I breaking any kind of violations with this setup? Gantry crane holding it up on this end. Winch keeping it from running off the back of the trailer. Set this down, pick this end up, slide it off. All right, there it all is in its new resting spot. And we got the caster still on it. So just rolled it around. Just trying to get equal, you know, fairly equal distance on both sides. Maybe favoring this, moving it to this side a little bit. But I don't want to get it too close. One, the gantry crane has to slide up into there. 
and two you know i want to leave comfortable space for the bandsaw which it does i've checked it and uh it feels comfortable standing there i don't feel like i'm bound up the only thing is like if i'm need to run over here and and cut something i need to make sure the gantry is either all the way forward or back because you know it would be maybe button into it there the grinder you saw i talked about that a lot in the last video it's really not a problem where it is but i i don't know i want to put some consumables uh, a shelf or a rack with some slots or cubby holes or something to put all my consumables just hanging from the wall there and you see the uh one difference is they they give you a the slot out arm and the monitor mounts on that and the keyboard uh, mount is actually there and the mouse is underneath it there and then uh, so instead of having a full-blown desktop like the first one came with they now are shipping them with these uh, micro Dell I don't know what they call them it's a Dell PC but it's just a little micro PC and they mount it to the inside of the cabinet so you don't have any external PC you know it's all enclosed and um which is kind of nice not to have an external pc so uh i'll probably make a more detailed video on you know kind of what the differences are between this and and what i had before but i'll just you know uh, and do it on the other channel like i said i have a lot of footage from the trip there um and for anybody that's thinking about getting a table sometime in the future you know it, i think it, it's just cool to see the people and hear from them the people would actually be making your table and um as well as uh you know the owners and just seeing their facility and uh if you're thinking about getting like a you know a series one entry level table or an xt which is what this one is you can see that these are kind of the small guys compared to the other stuff they do but just real quick some of the differences uh the main differences are instead of having the chain drive with the sprockets and all they they use a rack and pinion drive and i don't know if there's enough light here to see this but you can see the rack there and a direct, you know, pulley mount. Well, you can see it here. All right. And so, uh, so that's one difference. And the, this particular one here, uh, I wanted the clear path servos now they you know they, these don't come standard this is about a fifteen hundred dollar upgrade on the xt so the series one and the xts come with servos standard and i don't think they really like to do the you know upgrading to these but at my request they did it uh didn't uh you know supported me on that and i think it um created an opportunity to create an, an extra or a new way to control how the the gear engages with the rack and they're using this air cylinder to to do that and some regulators that are mounted right there so the regulators supply the right pressure uh when the table's on and you have air pressure hooked up to engage uh the motors up into the up into the rack at the right level of pressure to you know not cause it to bond but uh allow it to have full engagement and keep it more stable rigid you know all those kind of things so uh those are a couple main differences and i talked to you about the swing out arm there which is kind of nice to have you know um if you have a table near your near your plasma you know some kind of a work table like i had over there you know it's not that big of a deal but it is kind of nice to have that uh, also, torch height control is new now from what I had. Uh, all the tables, I think, are coming with this uh, style torch height control adjustment. And uh, it's smoother, faster, uh, more dynamic, and more adjustable. So those are just some quick things there on that. So anyway, um, I am going to get going on uh, getting the plumbing for water. I still have to get air over here. And so I'll come back to show you when I get more progress on, on that. Okay, well, continued to make uh, progress. Let me just show you what I got going on here. And uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of flaming going on on this one, but uh, I wanted to be able to have this thing where I could easily fill and drain it and it not be a chore and it not be a mess. So, um, 
I got some PVC there and everything is on a you know slightly on a slope you can see it goes there and exits out right there and you see it's continued to slope down and uh i know it's pvc i got a big two inch that's a one and a half inch uh opening and i just uh put an adapter to make it two inch just to give a little more flow if needed So, uh, so far so good on that. And, uh, once we get some water in it here, I'm going to open that valve and make sure it all runs out like it should. But what I did was, uh, you can see the pecs coming in and up and over. It's riding in that trough there. You can't see it. Um, and it comes down and it goes back behind the electrical box. I don't know if that's any kind of an issue or not if you should have your plumbing separate from electrical i'm sure i'm gonna get a lot of hate over that but what i did was i just tapped into it right here and um added that valve to turn all this on and off and you can see where it goes in right there i'm going to seal all that up um and my thought was just to keep it off out here you know when i'm not when i'm not using it and that way there is no water active at all times in this in that pex if something were to happen you know there's no water in it i keep it off only turn it on when i'm filling the table up here i want to do something a little different with this i don't know i just used some stuff i had on hand and it's kind of hokey this stuff right here is good to 200 psi and this last little bit of the run here i used to just be able to get a little more flexibility with it air plumbing um, on, on this setup, the, uh, the servos are, um, uh, the way they engage with the, uh, let me just show you this. And, uh, you know, people were complaining about the, uh, box and everything in or, or the wire management you can see with the, uh, lid on it, it's all protected and closed up. I don't have the lid on this one. Let me put you on the camera stand tripod real quick. Where is it? And man, I had to make, I had to drag out this uh, out feed table here for the saw. And it's just a piece of crap anyway. I had a part-time employee, I don't know, uh, a year ago. <clears throat> and I asked him to build something and just use scraps. And that's what he came up with. And I hate to criticize him because I kind of okayed it. But um, anyway, I was going to just show you this real quick. So... Um, there needs to be a way to set tension on the, uh, well, on the uh, gear there for the rack and hold steady tension while the table's in use, but also allow it to freewheel so you can, you know, you can move it back and forth and, and so forth. So um, you can see that air solenoid right, right there. So every motor has air going to it. And, uh, there's a command, uh, I think it's a, some, I think it's a G-code command or, yeah, I believe so, that before, uh, it's in the post-processor, I may be talking out of my ass a little bit here, but I believe it's in the post-processor that, uh, triggers that, but you can manually, uh, override it as well. So I don't know what you guys think about that. Ah, I don't even have it down there on it. Well, you can kind of see what's happening. I'll do it again so you can see it. So anyway, that's what I got. Um, one of the mistakes I made with my plasma cutter is you can get the, you can get uh, torches in 25 foot lead, 35 foot lead, 
and they told me that 25 foot would fit but it might be a little on the on the tight side and it was the same thing you know with my other table but i'm really limited on where i can put my plasma cutter because there's just barely enough room to connect it and i need to be able to see the front control panel to see if there's any error codes on it i also need to be able to turn it on and off when you change out the consumables and so forth so um anyway that's kind of where i got it right now i may end up moving it or doing something a little different with it but i did leave quite a bit of extra room so you can get back behind here when i had it over there i had it really jammed up against the wall and it was kind of a pain to get in and out behind it so i left some room to get back here um i used one of the rapid air manifolds they send you a bunch of those for drops so i have uh you know incoming air there and then out of that one is coming to the plasma cutter and then this one is running to the this uh guy here for uh the motors all right so we got some water in this thing now let's see if we can crack this open and go out and see if it's uh draining like it should i have no reason to doubt that it will be but we'll go check it and see Man, I don't know what the deal is with this thing when I bought it. It was uh, really hard to turn, and I probably should have taken it back, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll just deal with it. But um, you got to really give it, give it some, uh, give it a go to be able to turn it. And I know I'm unorganized and showing you lots of shaky cam here, but let me see if I can get that undone there. We'll go out and see if, we, see if we got any leaks. I hear it draining out of there. Let's go take a look and see what's happening with the water coming out. pipe coming out there i want to take it in underground right here and this is a you probably can't tell it on camera but this is probably a good eight to ten inches lower than the foundation so i can put a little slope on it and run it down here uh, so that i'm not just draining it right there and right there in front of the pink booth door so all right guys let me go close that valve back up and let this table fill up and yeah, we'll fire it up in a little bit. I'll probably do that on a separate video and let this one just stand on its own for what I got for now. You guys leave me some comments. And let me know what you think about any of this stuff I've done. I mean, I know it's not great, but it's better than what I had, which was basically nothing and having to manually deal with it. So let me finish filling this table up and uh, I'll have some more videos when we get, get this thing fired up for the first time. Still got to get the computer hooked up and all that.